you know, different economists and, uh, you know, like Thomas Sowell is, you know, I, I, I read a lot of his, his work and just like, you know, the analytical mind that an economist has to have to look at things very, very clinically and objectively, I think is, um, you know, very beneficial in, in any, I, I really wish I studied economics in, in my undergrad, just to, you know, to get that way of thinking and, and logical. Um, uh, if, yeah, I think if, this is one of my advantages. This is mm -hmm. one of my advantages in this analyzing the situation is that I bring some economic discipline yeah. into the discussion. And uh, economic discipline, uh, to me, means, first of all, how much. Don't speak in general terms. Mm -hmm. Try to, to be quantitative. And the second one is look at the alternative. So everything has to be measured against an alternative, uh, not by itself. And this led me, for instance, for, for uh, I think, the very important understanding that economically speaking, we just could not be uh, omnivores uh, that can do whatever they want and very flexible in our uh, diet because the uh, return, the energetic return on plants is about one tenth of that of, of animals. So it's, it's like going to the supermarket and something costs 10 times more than the, 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 the stuff that you bought until today. All of a sudden, something costs 10 times and uh, you have to buy. You would go broke. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that that's that's why humans could not could mm -hmm. not live on plants because the return on animals is so much higher, uh, mm -hmm. and and we were acting like any species at the border of our energetic return. So you know you have to you have to maximize uh, the return. Yeah, yeah. I always like that in economics. It's always compared to what. You know, and it's just, you know, people say, oh, well, this is really good. Okay, compared to what? What are, you, what are you looking at? You know, and, and, and if you don't put it in that context, things, things just don't make sense. And, and a, lot of, a lot of these arguments, when put in those, that framework, you know, they, they begin to break down quite clearly or, or be strengthened. And you say, okay, actually, no, actually that, that does make a lot of sense, you know, because you're comparing this to something else. And, and obviously, you know, when you get 10 times the yield from, you know, animal, you know, animal products and foods, that, that, that does make a lot of sense. Um, can you take us through, you know, your paper, you know, the evolution of human trophic levels during the Pleistocene? And, you know, you, you laid out a, a very, very, uh, you know, considered argument in, in various different aspects to argue that, you know, or, or, or to show the evidence for humans being, you know, apex predators, which as far as I know, I don't, I can't think of really an apex predator that, that grazes. So that would really mean, you know, carnivores. Right. Uh, the, the, the definition that I uh, used is a hyper carnivore. Mm -hmm. And this is a definition that is used by zoologists to uh, denote a carnivore that uh, consume 70% or more, seven zero that is, or more, of their food from animals. So that was my conclusion, that humans were hyper carnivores. Uh, and the, 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 I think the main uh, new thing that I brought, it's not completely new because other people did it as well, but not in such a scale, is to look at the body. <clears throat> Because the problem, the problem, first of all, let's define the problem. Let's define why uh, paleontopologists think that we were flexible in our diet. So we were omnivores. So first of all, 75% of the mammals are omnivores. As the, defini the defin definition of omnivore, that somebody to eat from more than one trophic level. So uh, plants and animals in this case. And uh, but that doesn't say anything about the quantity of uh, plants and animals or relative quantity that these mammals uh, eat. <clears throat> so yes, we are omnivores, but and again, and also it, it turns out that most of the mammals, like 80% of them are specialized. In other words, they are not generalists. They won't eat anything. They specialize in either plants or animals and they complete their diet from either plants or animals. So humans, uh, actually, the fact that we are omnivores does not mean that we are flexible. And I thought to myself, OK, the, the problem is that uh, when you ask, uh, or when people ask, what was the diet, they went immediately to paleontopologists. Unfortunately, these guys just don't have the tools to answer the question. But they don't know that they don't have the tools. So one tool which actually is giving them the answer 
is the stable isotopes. Uh, the problem with stable isotopes, in which, by the way, most of the studies of stable isotopes show that humans were carnivores, but really top carnivores, uh, until quite recently. And actually, when they moved for meat, they moved, first of all moved to fish, and only then moved to plants, right at the end of the Paleolithic. So, uh, I, they, they come to them, they don't, they don't have, I mean, what, what you find in archaeological sites is a pile of bones and, and, and stone tools, and if you're lucky, you find some plant residues. Uh, but it doesn't tell you anything about the relative quantity. Uh, first of all, not all, all, all the remains of what they ate actually were in this uh, place that you dig. And second of all, uh, plants remains don't, uh, don't, uh, you know, don't stay, don't, don't, uh, are not discoverable uh, easily because they just, uh, uh, you know, disappear. So they, they, they actually tended to go to hunter-gatherer uh, societies uh, that they could see. So the main one being the Hadza, because the Hadza live in Tanzania. Tanzania is close to the equator. It's close to where uh, human evolution, at least the early stage of human evolution, took place. Uh, all the Vai Gorges in Tanzania. So <clears throat> they went to the Hadza, and the Hadza eat about 30, 40% uh, uh, meat and 60% uh, plants. I actually, quite a lot of it was actually honey. So I looked at, the, at that the analogy and uh, it seems to me uh, absolutely misleading in, in a very, very important way uh, because the large fauna that was present when humans evolved just does not present, is not there for the Hadza to take. They just don't hunt any uh, elephants, they don't hunt rhinos, they don't hunt hippos. And actually, even if they did, the, uh, in early uh, Paleolithic, there were many, many uh, species of large animals. And today we're only left with three or four of what's called mega herbivores. That's uh, over a thousand kilos. Anyway, the environment is not the same. The technology that they have is not the same. Uh, and I, I just been there last year, and uh, you go from Ngoro and Goro to their area, and it's completely different. Goro and Goro is a savanna in a crater with many animals and very few plants to eat, in other words, like because they're mostly, uh, you know, uh, herbs. So there are many herbivores, but there are not many frugivores, for instance, in, in, uh, in the savanna. So uh, the, the environment is not the same, the technology is not the same, and the analogy is false, is faulty. So I said, where, where do I look? So I decided to look, first of all, into our body, uh, because really the evolution uh, uh, happened, first of all, in our body, then in our behavior too, but, but in the body. So I was able to find quite a few, uh, I don't remember, I think about 15, uh, pieces of evidence uh, that uh, show that uh, our evolution was towards carnivore. And the, the, the ones that I liked most are when other researchers compared omnivores or compared the uh, uh, other carnivores to us and uh, actually found out that we are uh, in the same group with the carnivores, uh, for instance, in stomach acidity, it's not activity we even even uh, with the scavengers and so even more carnivore than the carnivore but uh, in fact the uh, cells uh, distribution in uh, the winning age so that, that's that's the kind of uh, evidence that uh, i was looking for and uh, i listed them one by one and tried to group them into some uh, groups uh, in terms of the strengths of the evidence like uh, which ones are actually attesting to a change in the trophic level and which ones are uh, uh, showing specialization because that is uh, quite important. Uh, 
if you saw, if you see, for instance, uh, let's say uh, the gut morphology. So we have a long small intestine and a short uh, large intestine. And uh, this is the opposite of uh, chimpanzee. <clears throat> so it shows uh, actually a trend towards specialization. Yeah, because we are, specialization is when you give up, uh, you give up flexibility. Okay, and, and this is what actually this uh, evolution uh, caused. It caused us to give up the flexibility to feed on a large quantity of fiber. Yeah, actually most of the energy, the plant energy in the, in the, on, on the planet is stored in fiber. So a lot of animals, most animals, I don't know actually of one that's not, that rely on plants uh, and make sure that they can uh, utilize fiber. But we actually gave up that uh, ability. So it meant that we actually specialize. And the third one that was, the, like I said, the most uh, convincing in my point of view is that it put us in the same category uh, as uh, carnivores. So this is the, let's say the physiological, I don't know how, to what details you want me to go. No, 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 that's fine. Like, um, you know, I mean, I think that, the main thing that people talk about, and you know, I, I've, I've spoken to uh, other people about this. They said, "Well, you know, where are the randomized controlled trials? Where is the study that shows that humans are carnivores?" And you know, and you know, you know, ignoring the fact that all the the data that we have looking at different diets is all epidemiologically based anyway, and we don't have a lot of randomized controlled trials showing you know anything in one way or the other. And so, you know, it's you know, so 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 how do you how do you go about proving uh, that humans are, are one thing or the other. And so that, that's why, you know, uh, you know, I think that you have to look at other, other sources like you did. And so, you know, with, with, you know, how would you respond to someone saying like, well, where's your randomized control trial saying that humans are carnivores or, or not? Well, you see, randomized control trials are actually trying in the end to simulate reality. Mm. This is what they are. And we have to, we have to understand that this simulation will be flawed forever. Uh, <clears throat> now, that's not my, uh, I, I, I really don't, don't put much uh, faith in the random, uh, random, randomized control trial as far as uh, uh, nutrition is concerned. Uh, because you have very, very difficult time controlling the var variables. And uh, <clears throat> so really, if you look, uh, uh, yeah, as I saw one of your, uh, uh, podcast with, with a nice girl, I forgot her name, and you're talking about anecdotes. And what is the importance of anecdotes? So I thought I'd talk about it a little bit myself. <laughs> so I wrote about it in one of my uh, posts in the, actually, uh, you know, traditional societies that uh, <clears throat> Western Price visited, they were quite healthy. Uh, and, but they didn't have any color truth. <laughs> they, didn't, uh, they didn't have science to speak of. So what they relied on was anecdotes. The thing is that anecdotes, actually, the, the difference between them and us is that the anecdotes accumulated in the memory of a small group and stayed there and was useful, were useful. But we just, you know, we just don't have a depository of anecdotes uh, that, uh, that they will guide us. And that depository of anecdotes in the tribe uh, led to a very, very healthy people, uh, even consuming uh, agricultural diets. Okay, they didn't live to 100 or 120. And as Western Price marked, uh, the ones that ate meat were always looked healthier than the one that uh, relied on the uh, agricultural uh, plant diet. But uh, still, they were quite healthy. They didn't have any of the uh, westernized, uh, you know, uh, illnesses. Uh, <clears throat> so they were quite healthy based on anecdotes that they accumulated. And this is the way, this is how uh, we were, this, what happened is that as soon as the depository of anecdotes disappeared with the modern 
living and the reliance of science on science that they are health deteriorated. So that's my answer to this uh, randomized control trials. Yeah. Sort of, sort of being so sharp, you'll cut yourself, you know, like we're using it. It was like, oh, well, we, we diagnosed this and, and analyzed this with all these different metrics and you came up with the wrong answer, but because you have convinced yourself, this was such a, such a, a you know, thorough scientific endeavor that you're, you're very, very bought into it. And uh, so it can end up uh, cutting you as well. Right. Yeah. Um,